Hello, I'm Dr. Noel Aldrich, licensed nutritionist at Nutrition Proportion. At my clinic here, we believe nutrition is designed for healing. Whatever health situation you are trying to manage, there is a nutrition solution for it. I welcome you to come and contact our clinic to learn what is that lifestyle using whole foods that can most successfully help you reach your health goals. Welcome to Metabolic Balance. Tonight I wanna to talk to you about the Metabolic Balance program and be able to describe to you how you can achieve better health just using whole foods. So as we get started tonight, let's begin. I want to look at trends that have been happening within our health arena, looking at what are some of the major issues in health right now, and then look at what are those biochemistry pieces that we can alter just by changing our lifestyles. So let's begin by looking at some of the trends. The trends here for April 3rd, 2020, as we began to see what the coronavirus was doing, we learned that 78% of those individuals that were ending up in the hospital, specifically in the ICU, had underlying health conditions. Those underlying health conditions included diabetes, chronic heart disease, and obesity. Those are things that we can do something about. These types of trends, as we watch going back in history, 1959, hardly anybody had diabetes, less than 1% of the population. Now we see that it has grown to 10% of the population, and some medical professionals would say this is even a little bit low. Many people don't even know that they have diabetes. So significant growth there. Another significant area of growth has been in cholesterol, managing cholesterol. And so we see that there's been a 78% growth in the use of statin drugs just to try to keep cholesterol under control. Another area that has seen more news recently is non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Fatty liver disease used to be something you only saw in alcoholics with their constant intake of alcohol, their liver just couldn't handle it anymore. It began to misfunction. And one of the things that happened was the liver would start storing fat right within its own tissue. But now we see non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. People who never drink alcohol and yet they're seeing the fat getting stored in their liver. Veterans are one group that we can kind of get a microcosm view on. And so in 2003, 6% of them had this diagnosis, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. In just eight years, we see that number almost triple. And so we know something's going on there. In fact, in 2019, the Journal for the American Medical Association said this is becoming the most common liver disease in children. So this isn't just old people's disease. This isn't just something that happens with adults. This is happening all across our society. So there's something more important here than just getting old. We know in the United States that about 75% of men are overweight and about 60% of women are overweight. We've been tracking obesity trends in the United States since the 1990s. So you can see here where everything is blue back in 1990, representing about 10% of the population being obese. It progressed to starting to see some yellow or 20% in the year 2000 until 2010, where we're now looking at over 30% obesity. And the most current numbers are saying the average in any state is about 36% of the population being obese. We can track these changes in BMI, the body mass index, going back to about 1980. In 1980, we began to see changes in how food was packaged. So now foods could be shipped from farther distances. We also began to see changes in the types of ingredients 
that were being used in food. So now you had different types of pastries, different types of desserts, different types of goodies being formed. And we liked them, we chose them. Our portion sizes got bigger and put that all together and that's what encouraged obesity. Now obesity can also be described or is included within the metabolic syndrome, which is what we want to focus on. Metabolic syndrome is obesity, hypertension, diabetes, but it can also include these other diseases and ramifications where you have gout or the fatty liver disease that we mentioned earlier, increased gallstones, even polycystic ovarian syndrome is very closely related to how your metabolism is working. Depression and arthritis, closely related to how your metabolism is working. So while I tend to focus on obesity and hypertension, diabetes as the main thrust, these other things are also areas that we can greatly help by helping you establish better metabolic balance. One of the first key areas we want to look at then is how is your body handling your blood sugars? When you eat a food that is composed of short chain carbohydrates, those foods that are easy sugars to absorb, the blood sugar spikes very quickly. That's what's represented in this black line here. As that sugar goes into the bloodstream, now your pancreas responds and produces insulin to go into the bloodstream and tell the body, store the sugar away get it out of the bloodstream. So it'll store it in your muscles. It'll store it in your fat tissue. It might even store it in your liver. It's gonna get it out of the bloodstream. That's the main signal. And so the blood sugars will go down quickly and about two hours later, you're starting to get hungry. And you're going, why am I getting hungry? I just ate two hours ago. I shouldn't be hungry and yet, the reason is because of this signaling, the insulin is still telling the body, store sugar away. And it did that and now it's going, so now what am I gonna run on? What fuel should I be burning? So that creates a problem because that's usually then where we nibble a little bit, take a little snack, help resolve that. Another piece of information we've been told over the years is, well, if you eat five or six small meals through the day, you'll keep your blood sugar steady, which is true, it'll be steady, but it tends to be steady on the high side. And every time you eat, you create an insulin spike. And every time you get an insulin spike, you're saying store the fat, don't burn it. Don't burn any fat right now because I'm trying to get rid of the blood sugars. And so you cannot lose weight as long as insulin is high. So what we need to look at is where can I get sugars that are long chain carbohydrates, those sugars that will release slowly into the body. And so we look for those foods sources that your body will use well, but they'll absorb slowly, causing the blood sugars to go up slowly and then come down slowly. The insulin will go up slowly with it and you'll notice there's no ravenous hunger here your body should be able to sustain five, six hours without a meal and not feel the jitters or anything like that. So if we reduce the number of times we eat to just three times a day, then we also offer more opportunities for that insulin level to go down and more opportunity to burn fat. Even after dinner, that insulin can go down while you're sleeping and you should be able to lose weight even while you're sleeping. So insulin is a key hormone, a master hormone here to understand that when insulin is high, it's telling you to store fat, it's telling you, or it's increasing your stress hormones, you have higher blood lipids. Also when your insulin is high, you're unable to produce those anti-inflammatory hormones. Those hormones your body would naturally produce to help reduce pain aren't getting produced. Those hormones your body would naturally be producing to help slow the aging process aren't getting produced and you can't burn the fat off. So all of that is defined within metabolic syndrome, which the medical community defined over 25 years ago as 
that situation where your waist circumference is larger than it should be, your HDL cholesterol, which is a good cholesterol, is lower than it should be, and either your serum triglycerides are high, your serum glucose is high, or your blood pressure is high. Any two of these plus the waist circumference, and that fits in the definition of metabolic syndrome. Another way I like to describe metabolic syndrome is it is the Bermuda Triangle of the medical community because you start at one of these corners and if you don't address the core reason why you are at that point, so if you don't address the core reason of obesity or you don't address the core reason of diabetes, you slowly drift into the center of this triangle and now we're dealing with all of these. This is what I commonly see in the clinic setting. Individuals coming in, they, they say, well, I want to lose weight. And as we begin to look through their profile, they also have medications for managing their sugars. They also have medications for managing blood pressure or cholesterol. So they are right in the middle of that triangle then. So the number of people in America that are right in the middle of that triangle is somewhere above 50 million Americans. This is the number that were showing up at the hospitals during the whole virus situation. And so metabolic syndrome means you have an increased risk of diseases for heart disease, stroke, and diabetes, as well as these other issues. And within the medical community, they're all described as lifestyle diseases. Meaning if we can just help you change your lifestyle, you can greatly reduce your risk for all of these. Are we able to do that? Are we willing to do that? That's what the Metabolic Balance Program is all about. It is a lifestyle program. It's not a diet. It's a plan to help you learn how to live in a balanced way. It starts with this presentation and then we move to blood tests to find out exactly where your metabolism is out of balance right now. And from that blood test, we develop a nutrition plan and that plan is broken into four phases. The preparation phase, which is a two-day vegetarian phase, just cleansing out all the old, get ready for the new. And then moving on to the strict conversion phase where we follow the specific details of your personal plan to be able to see how your body responds to these foods that your body really does like. And as you move into metabolic balance, following that strict conversion phase, then we help you walk through relaxed conversion. What do you do when you go to a wedding reception or you go to a family reunion? How do you handle these things? That's part of the relaxed conversion phase. And then we end with the maintenance phase. Now we say end with the maintenance phase, but really at this point, you're learning how to walk that on a day-to-day -day basis and it's your lifestyle. So there's 35 different tests that are done. And you have that handout with you. These are the 36 different tests that are done to find out what is not in balance. Is it related to your thyroid? Is it your lipid panel? We do a complete blood count to see where the red and white blood cells are, are the immune system in balance, out of balance? What piece of this is the stressors in your life that are causing your metabolism to be out of balance? We take those blood test values, add that to your inf individual information, what are diagnoses you currently have, what are medications you're currently on, and then we match that up with a food database to determine exactly which foods you should be on based on those blood test results. That's how your personalized plan is developed. So nobody's plan is exactly the same because everybody's blood chemistry is different. Now we do have two assumptions with the metabolic balance program. The first assumption is that every person is able to produce all the necessary hormones and enzymes when you receive the necessary vitamins, minerals, and trace elements for your body to make them. The plan that you receive is developed to provide all of those vitamins, minerals, and trace elements from the foods that are in the plan. You will get those. We are assuming your body's gonna know what to do with them and help you move into metabolic balance. 
We're also assuming that every person with a well-balanced metabolism will now be able to choose the right foods and make those decisions on your own, paying attention to your inner signals. I think this plan does a very good job of helping you learn those inner signals. As you begin to follow the plan and eat those foods that are based on your blood chemistry, your body responds very quickly and you will begin to feel different and see results happen. And when you reach out to try something that you used to eat and try it, sometimes people are surprised by the response their body will give them. All of a sudden their body is saying, that's not good anymore. Those are some of the inner signals that we mean. So I'm not restricting the fridge. I'm not selling a bunch of supplements to help you reach metabolic balance. I am teaching you a new food pyramid. What are those quality carbohydrates that your body really needs? What are those perfect proteins that will help the building blocks for your body? What are the right starches for you to be able to eat? And when is the right time to be able to have a treat? Because we don't want to restrict that from you either. Now in the handout that you have, we have these eight rules that everybody follows with their individualized plans. Rule number one, we eat exactly three meals a day, not more or less than the plan prescribes. Rule number two, we ensure that there's a five hour break between the meals. During that five hour break, the only thing we're doing is drinking water. Then rule number three, we make sure each meal lasts no longer than 60 minutes, usually not a problem for most Americans. Rule number four, begin every meal with one or two bites of protein. So I'll bring my plate to the table and I'll have my protein and carbohydrates and starches, but I'll start with a couple bites of the protein first. Protein gets digested a little bit more slowly. It's very satisfying to the body. And so as the body tastes that protein, it knows this is gonna be a quality meal. And it already starts the satisfaction signals as you begin to eat so that you tend to eat less if you start your meal with protein. So you go to a restaurant. What are the first things that they put on the table? Bread, Bread chips. salads, chips, drinks, all carbohydrates, everything your body's gonna use, tasty, but not satisfying. It's gonna say keep ordering more until it gets some of that protein in. Rule number five, Eat only one kind of protein with a meal and don't repeat that protein again the rest of the day. So on my metabolic balance plan, I have beef as a protein that's very good for me. I have cheese that's a protein very good for me, but as I go to a restaurant, I would not order a cheese burger. Two different proteins in the same meal. I can order a great juicy burger, have a lot of vegetables with it. It's gonna be very satisfying. Then I go home, I'm not going to eat a steak that night because I already had beef for lunch. Now it's the time to do chicken, fish, maybe have that cheese now, but just one protein per meal. This is a way to provide rotation of proteins and helps eliminate stresses on the immune system that way. All the eating should be done by 9 p.m. and we all drink the quantity of water calculated for you usually about half your body weight in fluid ounces. And rule number eight, eat one apple a day. It really is true. An apple a day keeps the doctor away. Lots of scientific evidence on that one. So again, we're teaching you a new food pyramid to be able to establish a new lifestyle on. So the plan is assembled in a three-day pattern, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And so everybody's plan looks like that structure. What's going to be unique in this structure is what are the foods that you eat? Because again, it's based on your blood chemistry. So you all have a packet there. I'm gonna show my plan here on this particular screen. This is the way that my plan was structured with breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And then my particular list based on my blood chemistry showed very specific fish category, the type of yogurt and dairy that was best for me, the red meats that were best for me, the poultry that was best for me, 
the cheese that would work best for my blood chemistry, even the, in the beans, the type of beans. In this case, I have chickpeas, green lentils, red lentils, navy beans. Those are some of the beans that are best for me. Also the type of vegetables, carbohydrates, green asparagus, avocado, Brussels sprouts, radishes, whole very full list there. The type of lettuce group, including cucumbers, leafy lettuce, red lettuce, romaine. What was interesting when I got my plan back here, I found that tomatoes are not on my vegetable list. And I like Italian food. Here's a problem. But what I found out is as I removed the tomatoes from my weekly intake, I did see my just digestion improve. So I hadn't connected the tomatoes as being part of the problem. They were part of the problem. Now, it doesn't mean that I never eat tomatoes. This is where the discussion comes in for a treat meal. I can have tomatoes as a treat. And now when I do that, I don't have any digestive issues because I only do it once in a while, not as regularly as I used to. In the bread category, we like to make the plan with rye bread for everybody. We take wheat out because wheat can be very inflammatory. And you might have also seen within the popular press, there's a whole, uh, there's a book written, the Wheat Belly book. So we see a lot of good evidence that you can take the wheat out of a person's diet. That alone can be helpful. But we like to do rye bread because people do like bread and rye releases its sugar the slowest of all the grains. So that fits into our plan really well. And then in the fruit category, what are those fruits that are best for you based on your blood chemistry? Everybody gets an apple a day, but then the rest of the fruits are based on your blood chemistry. So the metabolic balance program has been around for 25 years. It was developed in Germany by a food scientist, a medical doctor, and a nutritionist. They got together and say, what can we do about this metabolic syndrome? Medications are only covering up the problem. They don't deal with the issue. How can we deal with the issue here? And so this study was done to look at changes in quality of life. And so we see everything moved into the highly positive category, physical well-being, mental well-being, emergence of pain, all shifted within the first month and stayed there over the course of the entire year because you have a plan that is based on your blood chemistry. These are foods your body likes. And that shows up in all of these areas of quality of life. Another study looked at the question, can we reduce the BMI by one point and be able to keep it down for an entire year? And this study was able to find that metabolic balance clients actually reduced it almost three points and kept it off for a year. So that's where we get testimonials like this. This lady was able to lose 170 pounds. She definitely learned a new lifestyle, enjoying life much more. Another testimonial, this is Robin. This is the way that I saw her the first time we met. She came into the clinic wearing a mask because her allergies were so significant she couldn't get out into public without having some type of an allergy response unless she wore this mask. We started working together on her allergies and one of the times she came in, she said, well, I visited my doctor today and he was really ticked off. I said, care to share what the problem was? She said, well, my blood sugar was at my blood sugar was at 400 and my A1C was at 11. He wanted me on insulin right away. I said, I understand. But she'd had so many allergies to medications and things that she had refused it and walked out of the clinic without the insulin. I said, well, we do need to do something, don't we? And so this was a Friday that she came in. I said, this weekend, I want you to fast on Sunday, just water no food. And then when I see her on Monday, give me a report what happens. So she came in on Monday, said, how'd it go? She said, I made it till 4.30 and then I had to eat something because I was going crazy. I said, all right, where's your blood sugar today? She says, that 200. I said, good. 
We've cut it in half. Now we need to put together a metabolic balance plan for you, which we did. And she followed that very well. And so this is Robin today. She's lost over 40 pounds. Her allergies are all gone. Her energy has just exploded. She used to be an artist and then all these health issues came in and she just closed up. Now she's receiving commissions and doing her artwork that she loves again. She's thriving. Another study that was done asked the question, is there a plan out there that can show 50% of clients being able to lose 5% of their weight and keep it off for a year? And so Weight Watchers was asked that question. They showed 31% of their clients were able to do that. Slimming World said 21% of their clients were able to do it. It was only metabolic balance that could document 62% of their clients able to lose 5% of their weight or more and keep it off for a year. And that's why I'm very confident about introducing people to the metabolic balance plan. I've been working with this group for five years now and I can verify these numbers that we see very high results, very good success, because this is a plan based on your blood chemistry. You can look up more information. Uh, Amazon has this book, Your Personalized Nutrition Map. This was written by the founder of Metabolic Balance. Within that book, it describes the principles that are why Metabolic Balance works so well. You can also go online to metabolicbalance.com and be able to look up that information. So in comparison, we think about Weight Watchers, Jenny Craig Nutrisystem. They're all popular programs, very effective, as long as you follow their plan. Note that there's no blood analysis with their plan. There's no personalized menu. Their focus is on the products that you need to purchase to be able to make it work, which it works for many people. The question that I always come back to is, what kind of lifestyle do you want? So with the Metabolic Balance Plan, we have a comprehensive blood test. We analyze it thoroughly to be able to put together your individualized food plan. There's a starter kit that comes with this to help launch you successfully and help everything start right. And if you're one of those people that loves everything on your phone, we can put your entire plan on an app with your phone. Also, you don't get launched onto this on your own. You get 10 personal consultations with me in follow through to help walk through this entire process because it is a learning process. The plan here is to help you learn a new lifestyle. So I become your lifestyle coach and help you walk through all those different scenarios, those wedding receptions, those family reunions, help you stay on track. So 10 personal consults typically lasts anywhere from six months to a year of time that we're walking together. And if more consults are needed to help you reach success, we can certainly talk about that too. So that is the Metabolic Balance Plan. I'm Dr. Noel Aldrich, licensed nutritionist at Nutrition Proportion. If you would like to learn more information about the full package and related pricing to help you begin your journey to a higher quality of life, please contact me with the phone number or email address listed below. Thank you.